Hey makers, have you submitted your US sales tax returns? Or do you still wish you didn't have to deal with all that? Come to think of it, is your business even obligated to pay US sales tax? Don't worry, at Freemius, we're here to set this straight. Most digital product creators are not aware of this. No matter where on earth your business is registered, complying with US sales tax is a must for anyone selling in the US. And if you haven't been handling US sales tax, this advice could potentially save you months of avoidable work and tens of thousands of dollars in fines. As a founder, your expertise lies in creating awesome software products, not handling legal and taxes. So let's explain once and for all how US sales tax works and what you need to do about it. In this video, I'm going to cover three approaches to solving US sales tax compliance. The first is handling taxes in-house, with no reliance on external services. The second is integrating your business with a tax compliance software service like Avalara or TaxJar. And the third is partnering with a merchant of record like Freemius. And spoiler alert, Freemius solves all your sales tax concerns by taking the liability on itself so that you can focus on building your product and sleep well at night. But before I get into how to handle US sales tax, let's first explain why US regulation obligates digital businesses worldwide to collect and pay US sales tax to begin with. It wasn't always like that. In the past, sales tax was calculated based on the seller's physical location, also known as physical nexus. Whether a shop, a warehouse, an office, or even a city in which your employees are located. A physical nexus applies sales tax based on the jurisdiction in which the company has a physical presence, with no regard to where the buyer is from. This is how US sales tax had worked for years, because, well, most shopping took place in person, through physical interaction. But then the internet became a thing, and online marketplaces like Amazon gained a disproportionate advantage. Because while shops in states like California still had to charge tons of taxes, any person within California could order stuff on Amazon without paying any sales tax at all. Amazon had simply used subsidiaries and placed their warehouses in states where US sales tax didn't apply. This threatened to kill face-to-face -face shopping in states like California altogether, threatening the US economy as a whole with major disruption. Then in 2018, a Supreme Court case known as South Dakota vs. Wayfair ruled that the US government would from then on impose sales tax on online businesses based on the buyer's location, rather than the seller's. So instead of imposing sales tax based only on where the business is placed, regulations now also impose sales tax based on where the economic activity is taking place. This is called economic nexus. But this did come at a cost especially for smaller businesses. As of 2018, online sellers are legally obligated to calculate, charge, and pay US sales tax when they cross a certain threshold. So, how do you know whether or not your business has crossed the threshold and how much you are to be charged? Let's answer this by exploring the first approach to US sales tax compliance handling taxes in-house with no reliance on external services. If you're planning to handle US sales tax on your own, it could potentially save you money over time. But first, you'll need to consider all the steps you need to take. You'll need to hire an American sales tax advisor, preferably one that specializes in taxes that apply to software products, to research and provide you with all the sales tax metrics that apply to your business in each US state and jurisdiction. As is everything with US sales tax compliance, the requirements will differ from one geolocation to another. Based on where in the US you're selling to, taxes will be calculated according to the policy that applies in that jurisdiction. And within the entire United States, there are no less than 13,000 jurisdictions. The differences between jurisdictions include not only the threshold above which taxes apply to your business, but also what tax rates apply for each sale you make. Then, different taxes apply within each jurisdiction depending on if you're selling to another business or if you're selling directly to consumers. And if that isn't enough, the taxing policy of each of these jurisdictions changes over time according to the condition of local economy. After you map out what sales tax apply to your business in each jurisdiction, to implement this data, you'll need to develop a mechanism that automatically detects your buyer's geolocation, calculates the relevant sales tax, adds it to their bill and invoice, and documents the details of every transaction. Once this mechanism is successfully set, you'll need to consistently monitor your income in each state, and then as you cross the economic nexus threshold in each state, 
register your business as a tax entity there. Then submit tax reports monthly, quarterly, or annually, depending on the state and your sales tax volume there. You will also need to track and comply with changes in US sales tax rates and local taxation policy. Building the infrastructure to handle US sales tax this way could easily take three to five months of your time. It might require hiring dedicated team members or you completely shifting your focus from making products to managing taxes. And even after you do handle all of this, you're still only compliant with US sales tax and you'll still need to handle tax compliance in other countries too. Now, it is true that sales tax typically applies to your business after you've made your first 100K in sales, as it is in the state of Washington, or after your first 200 transactions, as is the case in Maryland. But because a major portion of your income as a thriving software company will be coming from subscriptions and renewals, it's crucial to choose your method of tax management wisely in advance. This is because once customers subscribe to your products through one payment platform, subscriptions are extremely hard to migrate to another platform, or even impossible in cases like PayPal. All of this just makes handling sales tax in-house an unlikely choice for an agile company of under around 30 team members. Unless, you know, sales tax are your thing, it's just too much overhead. A second approach to solving US sales tax compliance is integrating your product with a sales tax compliance software like Avalara or TaxJar. In this case, you'll still need to spend between two to three months developing and testing an integration between your product and the tax compliance solution. But once set, these solutions will track your sales and handle all the research, the registration, the reporting, and the monitoring for you. The downside is the tax compliance software is super expensive. These solutions are typically used by enterprises that sell in huge volumes. This could cost like thousands of dollars a month. An additional downside of using a tax compliance service is that if for some reason you're selected for an audit and find yourself out of compliance, you are the one held liable for the unpaid taxes, not the compliance service. For those who want to avoid this exposure, the easiest, most efficient way is the third approach partnering with a merchant of record. According to Stripe's definition, a merchant of record is an entity that is legally authorized and responsible for processing customer payments. This entity takes all the legal and financial liabilities related to the transaction on itself, while you get your cash free of sales tax liability. However, when it comes to sales tax and other aspects, the merchant of record is by legal definition, the reseller of your products and is therefore responsible for all the legal and tax liability tied to the transaction it handles. So, once you partner with an MOR, you can forget about handling US sales tax and VAT in other countries altogether. It simply isn't your responsibility, because even if any of the transactions are found out of compliance, the MOR is the one held accountable, not you. The only downside is it comes with a cost, typically an annual fee or a percentage of your sales paid to the merchant of record. But in the case of an MOR like Freemius, the added cost is very reasonable when compared to the alternatives that I mentioned earlier. Also, given what's at stake, when you make your choice between handling sales tax in-house with a compliance service or by partnering with the merchant of record, what's important is not only to ensure tax compliance itself, but to secure your business's sustainability over time as it scales. So before you make your pick, calculate how much time, money, and human resources would you need to dedicate in each scenario. At the end of the day, the choice between avoiding the sales tax headache or handling taxes in-house is not only a financial choice. It involves choosing where to focus your attention, your priorities, and your resources. This is a choice that could involve hiring additional team members and consultants and occupy the mental resources you need to run additional aspects of your business. Taking time away from working on new features for your product supporting your customers, or chilling on the beach. If you found this information useful but still have questions, feel free to schedule a call with Freemius, or reach out directly by writing to taxes at freemius.com. We're here to help with US sales tax compliance and beyond.